yesterday. McDyne beat Ronnie Baxter in his first match. Before then seeing off Matthew Dennant. But lost out to Ryan Searle in round three. Worsley enjoyed a win against Ryan Palmer at this stage, but he was beaten by the eventual winner in round two, Darren Webster, seeing off the Womble 6-3. So both of these players have already earned some ranking prize money this weekend. But one of them will not be adding to that. In the game you just witnessed between Jordi Mayweather and Rob Cross, by the way, Rob Cross averaged 111 in that 6 1 win. And after five legs, he was an 119 average Rob Cross, so a real flying start to the day for him well, that would have been a flying start for Worsley but the bounce out stopped him getting further, further down below 130 and McDyne has the chance now he'll get a dart at double and it's double top he's just checking that that dart's not in double top it wasn't but that one is and that gives him the first leg I did mention that the number one seed Simon Whitlock may find it tough going against Richard North because North is comfortable playing against Whitlock they play in local events very often against each other and have kind of been proved right because Richard North has sent Simon Whitlock home a 6-1 win for Rich North the number one seed eliminated in round one just to bring you some more results from around the boards. Another seeded player, Steve West, is heading south. Back home, he's been beaten by Barry Bates, 6-4. No such trouble for the number eight seed, Ian White, defeating Kevin Payne to 6-3. Christo Reyes, also a 6-3 winner. He's beaten Jimi Hendrix. But Alan Norris, the number four seed, he's heading home as well, knocked out by Robert Owen in a last leg decider. Stephen Bunting has beaten Mick McGowan on our other live stream board, a 6-3 win for the Bullets. 96. But not only has the number one seed departed, so has the number two seed. Michael Smith beaten by the Brazilian Diogo Portela, 6-4. And a bit of a shock result. 60. And the highest ranked player in the tournament, Yella Klaassen, is also heading home. Klaassen beaten by... Richie Burnett, 6-5. Mervyn King also has departed. King beaten 6-2 by Ricky Evans. Number three seed, Daryl Gurdy taking full advantage of those departures, beating Paul Nicholson, 6-1. And Darren Webster once again off to a winning start, a 6-1 win for the demolition man against Mike Langendorf. Stay in touch with all results throughout the day at the PDC website. 58. PDC.TV forty two Kevin Madine then eyeing up a one four six finish. Two triple nineteens would have left him double sixteen, but that 54. is not on the table anymore. However, Jonathan Worsley not on any kind of out shot. Well, he might be frustrated by that because he's fired in a treble with a first start. 98. Choices for Kevin McDyne here. The gamble is firing straight at the treble 20, but he's gone for the ball. That leaves him 42. 
Double 16. 76. And the Womble fails to level. Can Supermac punish? Okay, he can. Lands double eight to do so. Twenty-three dart load. Just to put into context, how well Rob cross played in the previous match. It took him just ninety-four darts to finish off seven legs. Hundred and forty. Sixty. Ninety-eight. Ninety-six. Mentioned that Kevin McDonald is playing on the Challenge Tour at the moment. Jonathan Worsley does have a, a tour card. Played at all these Players' Championship events 99. this year. Reached a quarter-final here. Not here, rather, in Wigan, actually, that was back in April. 56. So, as shown, flashes of what he can do. 134. Well, odd choice of. Double left by Jonathan Worsley. Not sure he intended to leave double 15. Four Bad three. maths. Manages a butcher's shop by trade. I hope he employs someone else to hand out the change if his counting's like that anyway. Got himself in a, a bit of a mess here. Like dying. 257s for 32. Worsley returns. Break of throw. Yeah. In prospect. Double three required. And double three. Nailed by Jonathan Worsley. To halve the deficit and get himself into this match. As you can see, coming up on live PDC TV. World Series event in Las Vegas. And then the Bet Victor World match play at the end of July before we return for Players' I'm Championship course. action in August. Then more World Series events. The Auckland Darts Masters, the Melbourne Darts Masters in Australia, and the Perth Darts Masters, of course, returning Eight again. Five. Then European Tour action returns after a, a couple of months break in Maastricht. Dutch darts masters. So plenty of live darts action. 100. On PDC TV. No excuse for missing a dart these days. This pair have missed a few so oh. far. The qualifier for the aforementioned Dutch Darts Masters was held here in Barnsley on Friday night. Kevin McDyne unable to play in that, but Jonathan Worsley did 
He was beaten by Kyle Anderson. Now he wants double top to level up. 60. Fires low, and McDyne with a chance to break again and restore his two leg cushion. Double 16 to do so. There it is. He's been handy at that part of the board. Coming up next, Johnny Clayton against Dirk van Dijvenboda. Ferret. Another Welshman with an odd choice of nickname. Against Holland's Dirk van Dijvenboda. And then Richie Corner against Scott Taylor. Rounding up the first round action here on Streamboard 1. 58. McDyne halfway to the second round. Rob Cross, an on form on song, Rob Cross waiting for the winner of this one. Is this going to be a max? 190. It is. Forty-three. Four and a half legs it's taken to get that first max. Like buses, perhaps? No. 100. Sorry. 100. But Jonathan Words is down to a finish. 60. And again, looking to break back immediately. 158. He's got a couple of visits at least to clean this up. Another one of those would leave him double 19. 134. Just an act of tidying up. Leaves himself 24. McDyne looking to apply the pressure. 140. And needed two trebles to leave a check out. But double 12 for the Womble. Could be awkward. But he's used it and found the target. Wordsley needing to do something he hasn't done yet, which is hold his own throw. If he's going to turn this one around. 140. Five legs, four of them have gone against the darts. 58. Well, he fills it up, Jonathan Worsley. Second max of the match. Doesn't get him down to a checkout, but puts him in pole position for this leg. McDyne is not going to be on a checkout. 59. So, Worsley. Looking to level up and making good progress. 131. Yeah, perfect visit from Jonathan Worsley. Leaves himself double 16. 100. Aim shot. And pins it, and he just seems to have found a bit of rhythm, a bit of range. Jonathan Wurz as he holds for the first time. And now Kevin McDyne is getting in on the act. He's first. Not 
26. Good response from Kevin McDyne. 96. As he looks to edge back ahead. He's twice seen a, a lead pulled back by his opponent. He did lead 2 0 and 3 1. 40. 1 2 9 in front of him. 72 left. 89. <coughs> 81. I'm just not sure he liked the lie of the first start. His darts do land pretty flat in the board. He can kind of stack them, but that was high in the treble. Enjoy. And Kevin McDyne in the end. Lands double ten to edge ahead once more. Good darts again from Jonathan Worsley. 140. Some more results filtering through. Kim Hybrex, the number five seed, has seen off Josh Payne 6-2. And Steve Lennon has defeated Andy Jenkins 6-1. Also a win for Huddersfield's James Wilson, 6-2 against Jim Walker. And Benito van der Pass, a 6-3 winner against Andy Hamilton. Benito has a number seven seed today. Tenth seed, Joe Cullen, edging out Roby John Rodriguez, 6-5. 58. And this one could well be 6-5 as well. Forty-five. I can tell you that the semi-finals, the board semi-finals on our live stream one will be moved across from board five. So fans of Kim Hybrex will see the Belgian. He'll take on Keegan Brown or Paul Harvey. Then we'll see Robbie Green or Antonio Alcinas against Jamie Lewis or Lee Bryant. A couple of games. 136. Before that, Clayton against Van Dyven Border and Corner against Taylor. Still no wiser to 140. Working out which one of these two will be moving into the board semi-finals on board four. Because we have a race to two. See Kevin McDyne in the background looking a little worried, trying his sort of practice swing. Seems to have done the trick. 136. Yeah, good visit from Kevin McDyne. They have kind of followed each other in this match. 70. Most of the time, whether it's been good or bad. But Dyan has not trailed in the contest. And all he has to do is hold his throw a couple wow. of times. Book himself a last 64 match with Rob Cross. 140. Thirty-eight. 
85. Well, Madain has made life awkward for himself. He stayed there for double eight and he's found the target. Made the throw a couple of feet longer from the distance he moved across the hockey. But he managed to home in, find the double and put his opponent at the point of no return. 140. Forty four. And whereas they can only muster up forty four, so Madine has an opportunity to get the job done here. And it looks like one he intends to take. One hundred and forty. A wild one from Kevin McDyne. You can see by his reaction what he thinks about that. 85. Worsley then poised to force a decider, but that won't help his cause. And he might have just handed the initiative back to his opponent here. Only left himself a, a huge checkout. But Dyne is going to be on a a double. 170. Great visit. 170 leaves double eight. He might want to step right across the hockey like he did last time. Well, 138. Decided to stay there. Couldn't find the target. So Kevin McDyne for the match and a place in the second round where Rob Cross away. It's double eight. He's been good on this part of the board all throughout this contest and he's going to have to move across again and again he finds a target. He might consider standing far right for the rest of his career because he's been fantastic from that position, Kevin McDyne, and he moves through to the second round of today's Players' Championship event where he will face Rob Cross.